tens of millions of these little crimson beetles were crawling all over the trees and plants. Visitors and residents alike were confused by the sheer scale of the ladybird invasion. Oh my god, they are everywhere. They're going to start attacking us. This is unbelievable. Uh, you can see them all over here covering the trees, the rocks. Looks like somebody's just taken a bucket of tomato juice and splashed everything. From the mountains of California to the Rockies of Colorado, it's normal to see ladybirds gathering together in August to mate and then to hibernate. But this gathering was on an unprecedented scale. So what was going on? Well, it turns out that 2009 was a red-letter year for these colourful little members of the Beetle family. A wet spring followed by a soggy summer meant a bumper year for aphids. These tiny insects reproduce at an alarming rate, and more of this ladybird food means more ladybirds, lots more ladybirds. By 2009, in August, ladybird numbers had reached astonishing levels. The resulting massive mating and hibernation gatherings were truly a unique and wonderful spectacle. But the next weird gathering of insects is not so benign. In fact, it's one of the most destructive forces in the invertebrate world. We are back in Australia, where in 2010, the country was hit by a plague, which was both uncontrollable and unstoppable. Forms of locusts are sweeping across rural areas in the Australian state of New South Wales. Up to one billion locusts in a swarm moving over an area twice the size of the UK were sweeping across parts of southern Australia and creating mayhem. <laughs> friends and I just, we saw this big, like, it was kind of a brown cloud and we thought, like, it was going to rain or something, but we stepped outside and, like, we stuck our hands in it and there were just locusts. At Iwimple Primary School near the outback town of Mildura, the kids were enjoying their playtime when the swarm hit. So, one, 100 million? Billion. Probably a trillion. Like a much of them. It just got disgusting. Like, uh, all, mostly all the girls, I just went, ah! But it wasn't just the kids whose playtime was being disrupted by the millions of winged visitors. Local sporting clubs are at their wits' end, too, as the interlopers crowd their bowling greens and fairways. From tennis courts to golfing greens, anywhere with a bit of grass was fair game. In Mildura, the local football team were forced to take on two different opponents. But whilst the locusts were causing chaos in the town, it was altogether more serious out among the farms. Here the locusts were not just an inconvenience, they were a devastating force. Professor Simpson is one of the world's leading experts on locusts and knows all about their destructive power. They eat each day about their own body weight in food. And when you multiply that single locust by hundreds of millions or billions, you can get the sort of devastation that we see. But what's really weird about locusts is that they all start life as a harmless little grasshopper, one who shuns company and prefers a solitary life. It's true, they prefer to be on their own. Cannibalism drives mass migration in these forms. They're on a forced march, if you like, to avoid being somebody else's lunch, but chasing the lunch in front of them. 